The other day I was browsing the CS2 workshop when suddenly I noticed the pages were filled with a new type of items. I checked the game updates and found that we can now submit missing link charms. My first thought was, ka-ching! Now we have more opportunities to get something of ours accepted. However, I opened the workshop item editor and found a scary looking set of settings. That's when I realized that I need to come to you guys ASAP to explain some stuff. So, in this video we'll be talking about missing link or keychain items, where to find them, how to create them and more. And as always, I'll be using Blender as my 3D tool. So, let's get started. Missing link, more like missing model. You'd expect for an item that can be officially accepted to be easily accessible. But it seems that the good guys at Valve want to challenge us to find the model ourselves. So, in order to get the model of the keychain, we'll have to go to Program Files, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Game, CSGO. From here, scroll all the way down until you reach a file called pack01dir.vpk. Now in order to open the VPK file, we will need a special program called Source2Viewer. If you have GCFscape, it also works, but since the Source2Viewer is newer, I'll be using it to open the file. If you don't have the tool yet, then head to valve resource format.github.io and click on Download Source2Viewer. I've added the link in the description. When you get the tool ready, go ahead and open the pack 01 dir file and set source to viewer.exe as the default app. When it opens, go to the weapons folder, keychains and workshop blanks where you'll find a lonely file called kc missing link default vmdl underscore c. This is the model of the keychain item. Right click on it and choose decompile and export. In the export dialog, make sure to change the save as type to gltf because this is one of the types that can be imported to Blender. Choose the destination folder of your choice and click save. And when the export ends, click on close. Now we have everything we need, so let's open Blender. FYI, I'm using version 4.3.2. Let's remove the default cube and go to file, import and click on gltf2. Find the gltf file that was exported a moment ago and click on import. And now we get this tiny spiked sphere that looks nothing like a keychain. That's because the gltf file brought with it some extra stuff that are irrelevant for us, such as the model's rigs which are more relevant to how the model moves at the joints. So let's do some cleaning to the environment by simply clicking on the kc missing link default vmdl and then clicking the delete button. As you can see, for some reason this gives us not one, but two keychains. Click on the one on the right and delete again. There's also the collection name GLTF not exported, which can also be deleted alongside its contents. And finally, I personally like the model to face either the X or Y axis and not the Z one. So I'll press R to rotate, then press X to lock the rotation to the X axis and then press minus 9 0 to specify a minus 90 degree rotation and hit enter. So this is the model that we'll be working with. And I gotta say it is much easier to work with than the CS2 weapon models. If we go to edit mode by pressing the tab button, deselect everything and change the selection to faces, we'll find that selecting body parts couldn't be any easier. All you have to do is hover over the part you want and press L. So now if you want to select a certain part for painting or giving new material, all you have to do is put the mouse over that part and press L. From here we can go to the shading tab. This is where you can create the texture of the keychain. The first time you come here after importing the model, you'll find some nodes that contain the default texture of the keychain. You can go ahead and delete everything beside the principal shader and the material output nodes. Before proceeding, I strongly suggest that you save your session as a template which can be used every time you want to create a new keychain. This way you won't have to do everything we've just done again. So simply press Ctrl S, name the Blender file something like charm underscore template and save it somewhere that's easily accessible. Now close the template session and whenever you want to create a charm, copy paste the template file and rename it to whatever it is you want. 
Since this is not a Blender tutorial, I will not be going through the process of texturing my keychain. Everyone has his own idea of a keychain and therefore explaining how to create mine won't really help much. It will just make the video much longer. What I will show though is the baking process of the textures. For that we'll create a new image texture node by pressing Shift A, Texture, Image Texture. Click on new and name it to something like bake result and set the resolution to 2048 by 2048. This is the resolution of the examples provided by Valve and therefore that's what I will use. Click on the color and set the alpha to be 0 and click on new image. Now we're ready to bake the cookies, I mean the textures. Baking is the process with which we turn the 3D model into 2D images which will then be submitted to the workshop. For keychains we can submit 6 such images, also known as maps, which together will form the complete texture of the keychain skin. We can submit an albedo map, a normal map, a roughness map, a metalness map, an ambient occlusion map and finally an SFX map. If you're new to graphic designing then I apologize for throwing these big words at you. I'll explain them briefly, but I strongly suggest that you read about them yourself as well. But for now I'll bake only the albedo, normal and roughness maps and I'll create the metalness and SFX maps in GIMP. I will not be creating an ambient occlusion map for this tutorial. Let's go to the UV editing tab where we can bake the textures and get the results. In order to bake we make sure that the render engine is set to cycles and it would be much more efficient and faster if you set the device to GPU compute. If this field is disabled then go to edit, preferences, system and make sure that you choose either CUDA or optics at the top and have your GPU checked. Let's go back to the UV tab and scroll down until we find the bake section and expand it. We'll start with baking the albedo. The albedo map contains only the colors of the texture and nothing else. That means no roughness, no metalness, no normal map and no lighting, just colors. In order to do that in Blender what we need to do is set the bake type to diffuse and uncheck the direct and indirect checkboxes, which are responsible for including the lighting of the Blender scene. Now let's go further down to the output margin section and look at the size field. This value specifies how much the colors should expand beyond the UV parts, also known as UV islands. The default value of 16 is a bit too much so let's reduce it to something like 5. If you set it to 0 you might see some thin black lines around the arms and legs of the charm so it's better to give a positive number. And now we're finally ready so let's hit the bake button and wait for the result. And we got black for most of the keychain when we clearly have green and silver colors at the corresponding parts. If you're wondering why is that, the reason is because my texture in those areas has metallic value. For some reason Blender fails to bake colors with the settings we set if there is metallic value in the texture. So for our baking purposes let's go to the shading tab and set the metallic value of all shaders to 0. We will add metalness to the texture using the metalness map that we'll create later. Now that we fixed this let's try to bake again and see what we get. Alright much better. Now we can save the image by hovering the mouse over the 2D area and pressing Alt Shift S. I'll create a new folder and add the baked images in it. I'll name the file kc underscore no signal which is the name of my skin underscore albedo. Before we hit the save as button I'll change the file format to targa or tga because that's the file type required by valve and now I can save the image. Now we'll bake the normal map which contains the geometry information of the texture. Any bumps in the texture will be included in the normal map. So let's change the bake type to normal and click bake again. And as before we save the image as a TGA file and this time I'll change the suffix of the file name to normal. And finally let's bake the roughness map. Roughness defines how shiny or matte the texture is. 
and the roughness map is a grayscale image where white is fully rough or not shiny at all, while black is very shiny. Let's change the bake type to roughness and click bake. And again we save the image and name it with the roughness suffix. Ok we're done with Blender, but we still have to create the metalness and SFX maps, which I will create in GIMP. So I'll go ahead and open GIMP. So I've opened the roughness map in GIMP as a starting point and I will use it to create the metalness map. In my case I want all the keychain to be metallic except for the screen and button, which in the 2D version correspond to these areas over here. So using the fuzzy select tool I'll select both areas and fill the selection with black. Then I'll press Ctrl I to invert the selection and fill everything with white. White means metallic and black means, um, well, not metallic. So now the metalness map is ready so I'll press Ctrl Shift E to export it. I'll use the same name I used earlier with the suffix metalness. By the way, just to be clear, this name format is not a must. I just simply use it because it allows me to differentiate between the files and lets me know that this file is the metalness map of the no signal skin of the keychain. So feel free to use any name format you like. Moving on to the final map for this tutorial which is the SFX map. SFX stands for special effects and with this map we'll be able to add some available special effects in the workshop item editor such as pearlescent and glitter effects. White color in the map means that the colored area will have the special effects and black means that it will remain the same. In my case I will have the special effects applied only on the screen, so I'll simply invert the colors of the metalness map. First let's remove the selection by pressing Ctrl Shift A, then go to the colors tab and choose invert. And of course I'll color the button with black as well. Press Ctrl Shift E again to export the image with the SFX suffix. Alright, we're done creating the maps. Now let's open the workshop item editor where we can configure our keychain. If this is the first time you ever open the workshop item editor then you'll need to open Steam and head to Library, Counter Strike 2, Settings, then Properties. Go to DLC and if the workshop tools option is not checked then check it and the DLC will be automatically downloaded. Then close the dialog and press from play, then choose workshop tools. And finally in the workshop tools dialog press on the launch workshop item tools and wait for the game and the workshop item editor to load. In the workshop item editor we can see several folders or kits. For this tutorial only the keychain kit is relevant. Let's click on the kit and then press on create. As you can see the name of the keychain has to start with the prefix KC, followed by the name of the keychain skin. So I'll write KC no signal and press create. Now we have a new keychain entry and on the right side we can see its settings. First thing we'll do is save the keychain by clicking on the save button above. All your keychains must be saved in this path or in any subfolder inside it. I'll create a new folder called no signal and save my entry in it. Important note to keep in mind is to name your folders and items in small letters without spaces. Before I save I will copy the path of the folder. This is very important for the next step. So I've copied the path and now I can click save. Ok so now we need to add the images we baked in blender. To do so we click on the magnifying glass icon. However, if we search for the images, we won't be able to find them. You're asking why? Because the images need to be copied to the same path we saw a moment ago or any of its subfolders. That's why we copied the path. So let's go to the same folder and copy paste our images there. And now if we try again, we'll find the images. So let's start adding them. We're currently on the albedo texture, so let's choose albedo. Next the roughness. Now the metalness, normal and finally the SFX mask. Now is a good time to inspect the keychain and see what we have so far. So let's click on inspect and wait a few moments. 
And here's our keychain in all its glory. As you can see, it's identical to how it looked in Blender. Now before we proceed, I think now is a good time to talk about the allowed colors in keychains. The colors in the albedo maps should be in a certain range specified by Valve in order for an item to be eligible for getting accepted. The colors should be in one of two ranges, depending on whether the texture is metallic or not. As with weapon skins, those are the allowed ranges for metallic and non-metallic textures. In CS2, there's a tool that allows you to check if your albedo colors are within the correct ranges. In order to get to the tool, open the command console of CS2, make sure that the Comvar tool above is selected, and that the page is set to CS2 Workshop. Then click on Albedo. If the keychain changes to the pure colors you have in your albedo map, then everything is good. If however you get blinking blue or pink colors, then that means you're out of range. In which case, go back to Blender and change the color of the blinking area accordingly. Assuming all is well with the colors, if you're satisfied with the result, then you can just go ahead and submit your work. But before you do, it's worth checking the special effects that are provided in the workshop editor. So let's go back and see what else we can do to the keychain. All the settings below the SFX mask field are related to the special effects. I'll go over them one by one, starting with the pearlescent scale. If you ever created skins, then the pearlescent effect is similar to that of regular weapon skins. It causes the colors of the skin to change according to the viewed angle, as well as the scale specified in this field. The larger the scale, the more the pearlescent colors will repeat themselves. Note that this effect works only if the colors have saturation above zero, which means that it won't work on white, gray or black colors. If you want to use this effect, then I suggest not going crazy with the scale and use low numbers. Just experiment and play around with the values and see what works best for you. Next, let's take a look at the Glitter Intensity field. The name is self-explanatory. It basically adds glitter to the area specified in the SFX mask. And unlike the pearlescent effect, it works on all colors. The larger the value, the more intense the glitter. With this value, the specified area will have the same effect of a glitter sticker. For now, I will keep the value to the max so that we can see the effect of the other glitter related fields better. Next comes the glitter rainbow balance. This value decides how many colorful glitter pieces there is, with the minimum value being the most colorful and the maximum value meaning no colored glitter. When set to the maximum value of 1, the glitter looks like a shiny mosaic. Next is the Glitter Rainbow Spread, which decides how the colorful glitter is spread, which together with the previous field leads to either overall colorful glitter effect or glitter without colors. And last glitter related field is the Glitter Scale, which defines the size of the glitter pieces, or maybe more accurately defines the number of glitter pieces in the specified area. Small numbers mean larger glitter, and higher numbers mean, you guessed it, small glitter. And finally we have the iridescent fields. Just for demonstration, I flipped the colors of the SFX mask because the effect wasn't visible in the screen area. The iridescent effect is very similar to the pearlescent effect we discussed earlier. When it comes to our topic, there are minor differences such as iridescent being related to light changes as well as viewing angle changes as opposed to the pearlescent effect which is only related to the viewing angle. You can read more about the differences between the two characteristics in Google because they're not the same, but the effect in CS2 is quite similar. Also again, I suggest that you play around with the values of the two and see which is more suited to your needs. When you're done with your keychain, you can submit it by pressing on the publish button, then click on new. Fill in the details of the dialog and please change the thumbnail picture to something better. And when you're done, press submit, which will publish your item in the CS2 Steam Workshop. So that's it folks, I hope this tutorial was useful. If it was, then make sure to subscribe to my channel and check out its membership perks which will enable you to improve your CS2 skin creation skills. Until next time, take care and see you soon.